Hello and welcome to an Envato Tuts Plus tutorial. I'm Adi Purdilo and today I'm going to show you how to create some great looking and functional uh, pop-ups using Elementor Pro. Uh, in case you don't know what Elementor is, uh, check out the written version of the tutorial where I linked two videos that cover the basics in more detail. But just to sum it up, Elementor is a page builder uh, for WordPress. You can use a whole bunch of free and pro pre-made templates to create basically any kind of website that you want. And recently, the pro version of the plugin was updated uh, to support pop-ups. With that said, here's a breakdown of what you'll learn in this tutorial. First, we'll uh, briefly discuss pop-ups in relation to the user experience. Then, I'll show you how you can create pop-ups with Elementor Pro. In part 3, we'll uh, customize a pop-up and add some dynamic content. And finally, I'll show you how you can use the Envato Elements plugin to bring in more pop-up templates. So, without further ado, let's jump straight in and talk about pop-ups and user experience. When it comes to pop-ups, there are people that love them and there are people who don't really like them. Um, usually designers and people in charge of marketing, they love pop-ups because they give you more room for the content and also um, they can play a big role in the conversion rate of a specific page. For example, a marketer can use a pop-up to display maybe a discount, an offer, a promotion, uh, or even a form that can gather leads, which will ultimately lead to a better conversion rate. On the other side, there are the people who don't like pop-ups, and usually those are the end users, the visitors to your website. And for good reason, pop-ups will pretty much always disrupt the user workflow. They will uh, shift the user's attention from whatever it is they were searching for to a very specific thing, right? And most of the times this can be really annoying. But if done properly, pop-ups can actually um, be pretty good. They can benefit a page, they can help, as I was saying, they can help um, the conversion rate on a specific page. Uh, so by presenting relevant content, and presenting it in such a way that it's not intrusive or it's not annoying, then you can somewhat preserve the user experience. But for example, if you're gonna show ads in pop-ups to things that are completely irrelevant, then you're only gonna hurt um, your brand, your credibility, uh, you're gonna hurt the user experience a lot and ultimately, that's going to hurt your sales, your conversions. So you got to be really, really careful um, on how you're using these pop-ups. To give you an example, uh, if you're visiting Tim Ferriss's website, you're uh, probably looking for tips on productivity or uh, entrepreneurship. Well, Tim has something that's called an exit intent pop-up. So when you want to leave the page, either by, you know, moving your cursor to the back button or the address bar, uh, you get this uh, pop-up presenting content that's relevant to what you were looking for in the first place. Another example is the website of Peter Shankman that uh, uses a very subtle slide-in pop-up. This doesn't force you to do anything differently, it just gives you the option to get some content that you might be interested in. Now, I won't go into more detail about this topic. It's not what the tutorial is about. Uh, there is a, a whole discussion on whether or not you should use pop-ups. I just thought I should mention these things before I uh, go all technical in WordPress. In my opinion, pop-ups can be a good thing if done properly. So if you're presenting relevant or even tailored content to your visitors, and you also do that in a respectable and and maybe non-intrusive way, then they can be good. So you should use them. 
So with that said, let's jump straight into WordPress now and find out how we can create such pop-ups with Elementor. Currently, I have the uh, normal Elementor plugin installed. You can see the version here and also Elementor Pro version 2.4. So to build a pop-up, you would go to Templates and then Pop-ups. Right here, you'll find the list of all your pop-ups and if you have none, then you have an option to create one. So let's go ahead and do that. Here, you can uh, select the uh, template type. In our case, we're interested in a pop-up and you can even give it uh, a name. So let's say demo tuts plus. Create template. And the next step is to pick a pre-made template. Now there are a ton of templates uh, that you can choose from. And there are different types of templates. So this one is like an announcement with a button that sends you to a particular page. This one has a form that will gather uh, probably a name and an email address. This one is for a discount. And you can see each one of these has the pro tag or the pro label here. That's because the uh, pop-ups are only available in the pro version of Elementor. So if you scroll down, we'll uh, find some different types of uh, templates. You can find one for a subscription. Here's a uh, bottom bar. It's probably for a GDPR consent form or something like that. We can also find pop-ups that show up on, on the top. They're also called hello bars. So we have a, a wide range of uh, pop-up types to choose from. Here's one that uh, gives you social icons. So that's pretty, pretty cool. So once you uh, find a template uh, that you like, you can go ahead and click on it. And that's gonna give you a slightly bigger preview. And if you're happy with it, go ahead and click insert. All right, so here you're taken to the pop-up builder back in the WordPress backend. And it's really nice that all of this is integrated within Elementor. If you've used Elementor before, then you'll be right at home with the interface, with the option, everything. It's all really familiar. So it's really easy, for example, to move on from creating a normal page template to a pop-up. It's exactly the same process. Once you're in here, of course, on the right side, you have a, a live preview of what the pop-up is gonna look like, and you can go ahead and select each element individually and edit the text, the color, a bunch of CSS properties for it, so you can really fine tune uh, the end result. But let's take a look at the pop-up settings that we have here. First of all, you can modify its width, its height. So here's the width. And most of these templates are responsive, so they're gonna look great on either mobile or large desktop. You can set different options for the height. You can also give it a custom height if that's what you want. You can select the pop-up position. So if you want it on the left side of the page or the middle or the right, you can do that really easily from here and also vertically. You can do exactly the same thing. Something very interesting is the fact that you can choose whether or not to show an overlay. And the overlay is that extra layer that appears between the actual page content and your pop-up. In most cases, uh, this is a darker color, but for this particular template, it's actually white, and you can go ahead and edit that color, no problem. You can choose whether or not to display a close button. You can see it right here. And then you have access to the entrance animation. So how will this pop-up show up on your page? By default, we have a fade-in animation, right? But you can choose from a long list of animations. Just uh, be wary about uh, some of these animations because they're not uh, the best choices. Like for example, maybe pulse or bounce or shake, right? You can see a preview here or, uh, you know, wobble or tada, right? This is not necessarily something that um, you would use 
regularly. Maybe you could use them for like a kid's website and you want something fun and engaging, then sure, you can go ahead and use those. But normally you would just stick with the uh, traditional ones like fade-ins or slide-ins. So this is a fade-in and if we scroll down, we have a slide-in. Maybe I wanted to slide in from the right side. Well, we can do that, no problem. You can also uh, change the animation duration here. And then under general settings, this is the name of your pop-up. Currently, it's steady says draft, but you can change this right here. And then if we move on to the style tab, we'll find what kind of background do we want. You have classic, which allows us to get a color or maybe an image. Uh, we can also add a gradient if that's what we want. Border type, we can customize that. Maybe we want to add a border radius. We can do that here, no problem. Box shadow, we can do that also. And then we have access to the overlay options. Now overlay, as I was saying, is the layer between the actual content of your page and the pop-up. So it's like a, a separating layer, making your uh, pop-up stand out a little bit more. And here, currently we have a color applied to it, but we can change this. Maybe we want a darker color, maybe we want an actual color. This is uh, the place to change it. Or we can even add an image or a gradient. And then we have separate options for the close button, this one. So if we choose to display it, we can change its position. This is inside, but we can make it on the outside so it's always going to be in the same place and then we can use uh, these um, sliders to define its position and then we also have access to its properties like the color the background color and also the hover options so what happens when i hover over this button and also i can change the size of the button to be exactly what i want then we have an advanced tab. So here we have access to the more advanced options. Like for example, we can choose to show the close button after a certain number of seconds. So why would this be useful? Well, let's say for example that we have this pop-up, right? We browse the website, this shows up and we accidentally click outside but we were actually interested in what was on that pop-up, okay? So just to make sure that we don't accidentally close the pop-up or we really, really, really want our users to see what's on that pop-up, we can choose to initially hide the close button and then show it, let's say after three seconds, okay? So when the pop-up first shows up, it's not going to have a close button. After three seconds, the close button is going to be there and we can close the pop-up. We can choose to automatically close the pop-up after a set interval. Here's an option that uh, can actually prevent the situation that I uh, explained earlier, uh, prevent closing on overlay. So right now, if I click here, outside of my pop-up, if I click on the overlay, that's gonna close the pop-up. If I don't want that to happen, I can simply enable this one. Same thing goes for the escape key. If I don't want to be able to use the escape key to close the pop-up, I can check this. I have the option to disable page scrolling, right? So right now the page is scrolling, but if I check this, on the uh, actual page, this is just a preview, on the actual page, scrolling uh, will be disabled. And then I also have the option to allow or deny multiple pop-ups. Finally, we have access to margin and padding properties. We can start by defining some margins here or some padding, right? And you can um, unlink these and edit these values individually. And then if we want, we can add a custom CSS code right here. 
So once all is said and done, once you make your changes, you will need to publish the pop-up. So let's hit this publish button. And here you will have a window that asks you some more questions. So first of all, what are the conditions for the pop-up to be displayed, right? And you can add conditions. For example, you can include or exclude certain pages. Personally, for this test pop-up, let's display it on the entire site. So I'm going to say include entire site. Next, it's going to take me to triggers. So what exactly triggers our pop-up to show up? Because it's not going to do it on its own. We have to specify, we have to tell it under which conditions it should trigger. So we can trigger it on page load either immediately or within a set amount. Let's say I want to wait five seconds. I can show it when I scroll down or up the page a specific distance. I can show it once I scroll to a specific element and you can include a CSS selector in here. You can show it on click. So when you click a page a specific number of times, the pop-up is going to show up. So this is actually really interesting because you can activate this to make sure that you're not showing pop-ups to people that are not really interested in your website. Let's say they just landed there and they scroll up and down once on the page. They see something they're not really interested. Okay, so there's no point in showing them a pop-up. But if they start navigating your website, if they start clicking on your page, then that could mean they are interested and they want to learn more. So it would make sense to, uh, to show them that pop-up. Uh, you can also uh, show a pop-up after inactivity. So let's say you're looking at a website, you're not sure whether or not you, can, you should buy that product and you're just sitting there staring at your computer. And if you do that for more than, let's say, 30 seconds, you can show a pop-up saying, hey, you're having trouble deciding if you want to buy this or not. Here's something that might help you. And finally, the last option is on page exit intent. So as I was uh, showing you earlier in the tutorial on the Tim Ferriss website, uh, when you have the intent, the intention of exiting the page by moving your mouse cursor up either to the back button or maybe the address bar, we can show a pop-up then. And that's called a, an exit intent pop-up. And you can do that here as well. So once you decided what are the triggers you want, go ahead and click next. And here we have access to some more advanced rules. Like for example, how many page views does it take to show that pop-up? And this is useful, for example, when someone comes to your page, they saw it once or twice, and they're not really uh, decided on anything. But uh, if they uh, come to your page or to your website a third time, then, you know, let's show those visitors a pop-up with maybe a discount code or a coupon or something like that maybe something that will help them decide and make the conversion. That's what this option is for. Uh, you can show after a particular number of sessions. And this is something really, really useful. You can show it up to a set number of times. So because you want your visitors to have the best user experience possible, it's not uh, fair to them. It's not a good practice to just drown them in pop-ups like every time they visit you show them the same thing maybe they're not simply not interested so you can do using this option show up to x times uh, you can specify look you came to my website two times i showed you the pop-up already so the third time i'm not going to show you again because it's clear it's clear that you're not interested this is also something very, very useful when arriving from specific URL. This is really handy for when you want to do affiliate marketing, for example, or uh, you're, you have a landing page for your product, yeah? And that landing page 
sends the visitor to your website. Well, here on your website, you can specify the URL of that landing page and you know for sure that's where they came from. So you can create a pop-up specifically tailored to those users. Maybe you have ads on Facebook. So for people that are arriving here from Facebook, you can show a different pop-up than um, you do for the people that get to your website from the landing page. So just this uh, collection of rules that you can use make this a really, really powerful tool for marketers. You have a couple more options here. Show when arriving from. And you can go ahead and check or uncheck these options. You can choose to hide it for logged in users. All right, so if for example, a user is logged in to your website, he's already a member of your, uh, of your community, right? There is no point in showing a pop-up whose purpose is to get a user to register, right? It's pointless. So for users that are logged in, you have this option. And then something that's also very handy, what devices do you want to show the pop-up on? Is it a desktop only pop-up? Well, then uncheck these two. Is it a mobile one? Then just check mobile. Is it a pop-up that works everywhere? Well, you can choose all of these options. Now, once you're done with all the conditions and the triggers and the rules, go ahead and hit save and close. And let's have a look. So if you remember, we are showing our pop-up after five seconds. And here it is. You saw how easy it is to, to get one of these pop-ups up and running. You just select the template, you make the necessary changes, and you publish it. Now for this particular template, we didn't do any major uh, customization. We just hit next, 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 basically. But what if you want to customize one of these templates? Well, let's go ahead and do that next and also play around with some uh, dynamic content. So I'm back here in the WordPress admin and under pop-ups, we can see the uh, demo Tuts Plus pop-up that we created earlier. We also have a short code right here if we want to embed it in any of, the, any of our pages. But for now, let's go ahead and uh, delete this because I want to create a new one and do a little bit more customization. So add new pop-up. Let's call this demo two. It doesn't really matter for uh, the purpose of this tutorial. And let's say that I want a pop-up uh, that's gonna allow users to subscribe to a mailing list, okay? So I'm looking for something very simple, but very classy. Let's uh, scroll down here, see what we can find. Maybe this one. Yeah, that looks pretty good. So I'm gonna hit insert. And I really like the, uh, the animation. First of all, I'm gonna edit this text here. So join the family. I'm gonna say join the newsletter. Uh, for this particular text, uh, I want a little bit more line height. So I'm gonna to go to style, typography, and under line height, I'm just gonna increase it slightly, just like that. On this form, I wanna change the color of the submit button. I don't really like that. So for that, I'll go to style, button, and I'm gonna change the background color to something like that. And also change the text color to white. And that looks a little bit better. Let's also change the font to bold and increase the letter spacing just a little bit. And I'm gonna increase the letter spacing here as well. We go to style, typography, scroll down, and let's increase the letter spacing. Okay, so that's a lot better. Now, let's say that I only want to display this um, pop-up on my sample page. And also, before we wrap things up, let's go ahead and change the color of this overlay. I'm gonna change it from uh, white 
to black. So it's going to look something like this. I think it just uh, pops out a lot more. And something else I'm going to do is move the close button outside. I want it to be somewhere around here. So I'm going to go to style, close button, and I'm going to choose outside. And I'm going to choose about four vertical and four horizontal or even a little bit higher on the vertical, so five. So it's around there. Okay, so now let's go to publish. And I want to display my pop-up just to give you an example only on the sample page. So I'm going to say add uh, condition. So I'm going to include a singular page, all pages, and I'm going to search for sample page. Hit next. Let's um, show this on page load after three seconds. Next. And here I'm just going to say show on all devices. So save and close. Now it's published. Let's uh, jump in the front end. You will see that on, for example, my home page, after three seconds, nothing happens. But if I go to the sample page, one, two, three, and there is the pop up. That is pretty cool. Now, before I wrap things up, I want to show you a very interesting feature of the pop up builder that allows you to add dynamic content to your template. Basically, you can get data from your WordPress installation uh, and you can insert it into your pop up. You can insert the username, the uh, page titles. So that is huge. Let me just show you quickly how you can do that. So we'll go back to our dashboard and I'm going to create a, another pop-up here just so you can uh, see it better. So add new. I'm going to call this dynamic and let's choose this template for example right where it says 30% off. So let's say that you are on a product page on your shop and you want to quickly show users that hey there's a 30% off on this particular product and it would really help if you can pull some product information from WooCommerce from the database and show it on your pop-up. Well you can do that. Here's how. So you can select a piece of text for example and you click where it says dynamic. And you have a, a wide range of options here. You can select information about the post, uh, information about the site, if that's what you're interested in, about the author, and then we get to WooCommerce. And I have WooCommerce installed here. And we can get, for example, the product title. And if you click on it again, you have the option to add a before text an after text or a fallback text. So the fallback text is displayed just in case the information from the database or the dynamic content cannot be retrieved. For now, I'm just gonna leave these off. What about this button? Let's get this. And where it says text, I'm gonna hit dynamic. WooCommerce, I'm gonna get the product price. I'm gonna click it again. And I'm going to say before, buy now for, and then it's going to be our price. And then I can also get the background of the pop-up. So we go to the pop-up settings, style, background, and I hit dynamic. And I can choose from WooCommerce the product image. So let's go ahead and hit publish. Where do you want to display our pop-up? Let's say that only on the WooCommerce pages, on the entire shop, but you can also um, further refine your selection here. Next. Let's say after inactivity, let's say we're gonna wait for five seconds before we display that. And then for the advanced rules, well, it doesn't really matter here. So we're gonna save and close. And now it's publishing, so let's go ahead and have a look. So we'll go to our shop and let's go on this beanie. 
product. Let's do five seconds of inactivity. And there you go. Now we have a sale. It says 30% off Beanie. This is dynamic content. It got the title of our text and it says buy now for, well, $20 was the price. Strike and then we have the new price of $18. Again, this is dynamic content. It got the price from here. Uh, one thing that it did not get is the actual product image. So let's see if I did something wrong here. Oh, it was actually the section that had this background image, my mistake. So let's go back to style and image under dynamic. We'll choose again WooCommerce product image. So let's hit update. Okay, and let's go back. Let's select this belt, for example. Again, five se or three seconds of uh, inactivity. And there you go. We now have the belt image, uh, the belt product title, and the price. So that's how you can use dynamic content to pull data directly from WordPress or associated plugins to display on your pop-ups. Now, before I wrap up this tutorial, let me quickly show you how you can use the Envato Elements plugin to bring in even more uh, pop-up templates. To use, to use the Envato Elements plugin, uh, after you install it, you go to Elements, make sure Elementor is selected, you would go to Blocks, and you would browse by type pop-up. And you'll see a bunch of templates ready to go and compatible with Elementor. So let's say you want this one, you click on it, you hit Import Pro Template, and once it's imported, you can go ahead and click Edit Pro Template. And that's gonna open that template in the Elementor editor. And you can go ahead and edit this just like I showed you in the previous chapter. And once you're done, you hit Update, and then you can preview it on your front end. It's really, really that simple. And that's it for this tutorial. As you saw, creating and customizing pop-ups is really simple with Elementor uh, because it's all tied into the same WordPress installation. So you get this seamless integration with your website. What do you think about this new feature in Elementor? Let us know down in the comments. We would love to hear from you. So thank you very much for watching this tutorial. I'm Adi Pordilo and until next time, take care.